It's not easy to be a pioneer, but oh, it is fascinating. Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell was impressively the first female physician in the United States, but the decision to allow Elizabeth into medical school was actually left up to the hands of their student body, which was 150 male medical students. They unanimously voted for it, likely because they thought it was a joke. And that began the career of Elizabeth Blackwell becoming a physician. Elizabeth was born in 1821 in Bristol, England. She grew up in a large family, one of nine children. She immigrated to the United States as a young child. Elizabeth's parents were active in the abolitionist movement. Her family's commitment to the anti-slavery movement clearly impacted Elizabeth's sense of providing care to anyone who needed it, regardless of their race, their ability to pay. Dr. Blackwell had a family friend, Mary, who was gravely ill with cancer. And her friend commented, why not study medicine? Had I been treated by a lady doctor, I wouldn't have suffered so terribly. So once the seed was planted, Elizabeth applied to a variety of schools, was not surprisingly rejected by all of them. Thankfully, she did have a mentor who had a connection to Geneva Medical College. What was a lark, turns out that she was the best in that class. Although Elizabeth successfully graduated, her battles would continue. There was a stigma, as you can well imagine, about being treated by a female physician. She became very frustrated by that. Being still excluded from medical companionship and from the means of increasing medical knowledge, I finally determined to try and form an independent dispensary. Elizabeth opened her own dispensary, which is a medical clinic in Tompkins Square, an area that really at that time was a slum filled with the indigent, the immigrant, people without access to health care. And she provided even free health care to those who couldn't afford it. Elizabeth deepened her work. She created a hospital to be staffed by women physicians. The New York Infirmary for Indigent Women and Children. Elizabeth was clearly blazing a pathway, but I think she also recognized that she had to do more work to make sure that pathway existed for other women. She opened a medical college for women, the Women's Medical College, which 30 years later was subsumed into the Wild Cornell Medical College. Elizabeth Blackwell's legacy is very much alive in this hospital. We see images of her on our walls, and we see female trainees um, that she has paved a pathway for um, amongst our staff. But most importantly, we actually still see her social consciousness presence among us and the way that we value diversity and care for all people. We're very proud of the number of physician leaders who are women here at New York Presbyterian. Elizabeth Blackwell's commitment to community and the women and children lives on in this hospital. It is hard with no support but a high purpose to live against every species of social opposition. I would not trade one moment, even the worst moment, for all the riches in the world. <laughs>